don't know what their future is. <laughs> People that don't have hope. So they just believe in talking anyhow. So they were saying that until the industry came together and we started having leverage through one man, Opa Williams, who brought all of us out the night of a thousand lives. We were not many, we were very few. And, you know, the money wasn't, you know, it wasn't, that was, in fact, we were paying to go to a show and we we'll, we we'll pay everything, we we'll pay money, we we'll pay attention. <laughs> we we'll pay everything just to go on stage and perform. But after the thing kicked up, Right now, as I speak with you, almost every family in Nigeria has a comedian. <laughs> if there is no comedian in your family in Nigeria, that means your family is incomplete. <laughs> almost everyone wants to say funny things. Our, we have funny people all over. Even our president is funny. <laughs> Very funny. He's one of the funniest people. You know, stay one month in Nigeria. Five months outside. It's it's not of fun. Then you talk to one ear, he hears the other one yeah. on your own. It's it's crazy. It's not you know the, the journey into the comedy in Nigeria was not easy. For me, in as much as I was into comedy that people were even looking down on. I have to keep doing this thing. Like, I don't know. Even my children now, I don't know what they say in school when they ask them, what does your father do for a living? He says, don't you know that man that fall around anyhow? <laughs> Talk anyhow. This, it's not been easy. But I thank God for where we are today. It has gotten to a better level where the acceptance is, has gone to the level that almost everything they do in Nigeria now, they need a comedian. If you think it's a lie, go to Nigeria very early in the morning, morning devotion, they call us. <laughs> morning prayer. <laughs> we'll call a comedian to crack joke first. <laughs> so it's not been easy, but we are okay. We are happy where we are, and we know it's still going to grow to a better, bigger height. It's not been easy, and also here in Rwanda we have many young people who are aspiring to be comedians. So maybe later on you'll also tell us some of the qualities, and uh, you'll just give them advice on what uh, they can do in order to continue and follow their passion. Now, Dr. Ofwenenke, coming to you. Yes. Please share with us your journey into this industry. Um, well, I think this is same as Nigeria, and Kenya has not been easy for us as well. But uh, Kenya has been going through a certain revolution of comedy right from the times when the guys will go out in an empty space, but even the opening of a door when they're acting, they have to produce the sound. Like a kapapa, guys will have to fake slaps and everything. They will move now to sitcom. Then later on, a uh, guy by the name Churchill, who is more like our father in stand-up comedy, now started official started, uh, started stand-up comedy. At first, guys were fighting. Uh, both us comedians, we didn't know how one would have the courage just handling the microphone and now having a crowd to yourself. You see the other type of comedy, you have guys who are supporting you. But this one is your own fight, you're fighting. So it's you and the crowd. You do a joke, they don't laugh, it's you. They laugh, it's you. They are comments and both the insults, it's you. You live there, you are bored. At first you are bored, you don't know whether they're calling you bo. Then later on you realize it's not the bo that you think, it's the bo of insults. <laughs> you leave the stage. But then again, for me it's been almost like 10, I think the February 25th, I'll be celebrating 10 years officially. And I think first of all, the first people who took such a time to accept that I want to be a comedian was my family, because I'm a lawyer by profession. But uh, they were like, how do you go to law school to go and do comedy? I mean, you'd rather put comedy and get into, get into law school. They did take a serious job. My, dad's, my dad is still worried until today. I, I live in a good house, drive a nice car, but he's still worried if I can maintain that life with comedy. He doesn't understand. At times he's told, uh, your, your son has been seen on television jumping on top of chairs and tables. He gets worried. My mom has been pouring anointing oil on her TV, hoping that one day I get no more. But 10 years now, and I mean, but it has not been easy. It has not been easy at all. But now I can say that in Kenya, 
at least now comedy is also being accepted. In top events, you cannot do any top event without the MC being a comedian. Now even funerals in Kenya, they are now calling comedians as well. So I think so. They then also cry. I mean, when you when you are entering heaven, at least it's a consolation. If you not get into into heaven, at least you laughed along the way until you enter hell. Because hell you cried the whole time. So at least in your conf coffin you need to be found there uh, with with some laughter. <laughs> so we are even encouraging the coffin makers to also be putting. Uh, YouTube shows inside the coffin. <laughs> so as you laugh all along, because when you enter hell, it is hell. Uh, things will not be easy. But it's, a, it's an interesting place to be. It's an interesting career to be in. Yeah. Now, yes. still, uh, from what you just said, it is an interesting career. It has its ups, it has its downs, just like any other. Oh, career. yes. Okay. Yeah. But Even coffee makers, things have been tough of late. For them, yeah. Uh, like, they've been complaining. Business is down. Guys are not dying. Uh, <laughs> the economy has been bad, of course. Like, we used to make it know that a holy communion was enough for everybody in church. But for the past one month, because of the economy, guys have been sharing even Holy Communion. You just do a small sip, you give your neighbor. Like, it's not the full body of Christ. At least if you get your finger, Christ, you, you're, you're, you're okay. Uh, oh, what were you asking? Through all the hard times, through all the challenges, how do you stay motivated to continue with this uh, same career? This, this uh, same career? It's the problems of life. Comedy is the process of life that, that much. Even is, these are the kind of challenges we face. At times the microphone does not work. But uh, <laughs> comedy, I, think, I think what keeps us going is the fact that you, you have struggled so hard to get here and there's no turning back at all. Like for me, I don't tell myself, there is no turning back at all. I've struggled so hard that Arthur can call me here if I can sleep at Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's a very emotional. <laughs> if me, I'm not entering aeroplane, so just for comedy, trust me, if I was a lawyer by now, I'll still be operating in buses in Kenya. But now, because of useless comedy, useless talk, I'm going, like, going all over the world. So it's because of the desire to, own, to just want to better yourself. The desire to be, to want to be, to be that, like the ones who have already, who have already gone ahead of us and at the top. The likes of Clean, the likes of Baskets, the likes of Trevor Moore, the likes of uh, Steve Harvey. It's that desire to want to be also be there and enjoy, enjoy the kind of life that I also enjoy through this community. So for me, that is what drives me. That the desire I don't want to, but I have seen poverty. Ah, I can't go back there. This community must take me there. I must drive. I must drive to a plan. I must get to a level whereby I drive four cars in a day, my own. One gets me to the gate, I leave it there. The one gets me to, to the central uh, district, it leaves me there. The other car, like that, until it's a rotation. I want to have four phones. One is for videos, for WhatsApp, like that. Life has to be good, there's no option. Yes. Okay, now after coming to you. What are you? What are you uh, done? <laughs> what are you uh, done? Yes. So, yes. She was but, uh, well, as he asked, what has been your journey, and also what keeps you motivated and driven through it all? Well, I think my answer is very simple. Um, we tuma umunakora ibiyakora. <laughs> so you just English, you it, I feel like we feel like you're gossiping. Just go to all like you guys from Mutura, 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 and you will see. I'm going to go to Said it better at than all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? 
that bike was female. <laughs> that bike was a female bike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Now, we performed. We have more comedians on stage than comedians in the audience. We have to share the little that we have. And then remember, my dad told me, bring back my batteries. Put them back on the bike again. People see you as you're going. <laughs> that was a good show! <laughs> you go, <laughs> now, now look at us, guys. I mean, I mean, take a moment and look at us. We are here. This hotel sponsored us for free. Do you know what it will take for one of the top hotels in the country, even in the region? Yeah? To trust your brand and say, hey, you guys can work here for one year for free. We'll give you rooms. And what we give you, just bring the show here. It means comedy is one of the biggest elements in this country. So the journey has been tough, but when I look at where we, where we are, having guys having their own shows, bringing top comedians, and having the media as many as you guys, you guys don't know, back in the days we used to take our own pictures to say it was a full house. Hey, this guy was there. Kejon, Kejon was there. Yeah. Kejon was there. He can tell you. This press conference, ah, JP, that one. <laughs> but JP has been everywhere. Yeah. JP, I'm not going to tell you what's going on. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is this, the journey has been tough, but the destination looks beautiful. Yeah. And the fact that you guys are here are, are so interested in the story, it even shows me more courage that, hey, we are not alone. We have the media, we have my fellow comedians, we have the country supporting us, we have the morale from the comedians. Then what's remaining? Maybe Patrick or Mercy is going to be the next Trevor No people are talking about. Yeah. It all starts from here. Yeah. So I think that's what I can say. Yeah. Thanks. Now, Patrick, to come to you. Mukula Mandi was a Vajeva to get their journey in the comedy now as a Zika Rising star. Now, Tony, let's go. 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 Tony, let's go.
kanchi bisha chani takuze kani fuzi kuna ni nagi ya kuri tanga hindi tana anga wati kuri kuna kuni ne kuni chivazu na kuzi How did you even get to know that you want to be a comedian? And ever since uh, that point, and I'm uh, holding today, would you just tell us everything? Thank you. 
My expectation <laughs> from to the show or the country. And the country. <laughs> How you feel the country? I feel the country. I use my eyes. <laughs> I think it's, that's the best way to view a country. Just look and view. In fact, when I, I immediately you told me to come here, I, I decided. In fact, I envy you people. This country, I envy you. It is. You know, first of all, it is obvious that it's the cleanest country. Yesterday, when they picked us from the airport and were bringing us here, we got to a zebra cross. And they stopped the car <laughs> for people to pass. Wow. <laughs> when I say wow, wow, I mean it. Capital letter. Wow. <laughs> the only time I had a little bit of consolation was somebody passed and was wearing black and white stripes, so I felt okay, finally a zebra cross. <laughs> Honestly, it's something else. You, Rwanda is one of the best countries in Africa, that's the truth. It's beautiful, it's lovely, and I was telling them yesterday, I think the whole of the world should learn forgiveness from this country. Honestly, all of you living together with all the stories we've heard. Let me tell you, in Nigeria, I, I don't know how they view Nigeria from here. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I know you guys view us as a lot of, there are so many things, so many angles, both terrible, nasty, good and bad. But the only thing, whenever you talk of, like, Kenya, what we think about elephants, <laughs> <laughs> lion king, like, lions giving birth and bringing it out and all the other animals will bow, you know those kind of things. And the only thing we know in Kenya, the only word we know is Hakuna Matata. <laughs> because it means don't worry, be happy. But how come that one is so long and this one is so short? That means that's in. Well, that's. Kenya. When they talk about Rwanda, two things come to our mind. Hotel. Hotel Rwanda. Is it not? <coughs> that movie. And the genocide and all those stuff. People still feel that when you come here, it's still going to be. Honestly, they don't know the half of it. This place is wonderful. And all of you are so coordinated. See, as the hotel gave this man this place to run. He said for one year. Yeah. Yes, for one year. Wow. Another big wow. In Nigeria, you sell your kidney. <laughs> to do this kind of thing. That means the country supports you, the people support you, you support each other. After everything, it's wonderful. So when it comes to the country, just leave it out of it. It's wonderful, it's lovely. The show this night, immediately they told me about this program. I told my manager, no, no way, no matter what's going on, I must be here because I want to experience what I experienced in the last experience that I experienced. <laughs> the last year. And nothing will stop me from coming. Something nearly stopped me. But I can't remember what it is. <laughs> so right now, in fact, after this program, if they invite me another one next week, before you finish sending the invitation, I'll be at the airport waiting. <laughs> Honestly, it's lovely. Honest. Um, the, for the show is that my expectations, I expect for people to come, pay the gate and enter, so that Atok can continue going further. And I expect for people to come, relax, and enjoy themselves. I forgot to tell you something earlier, when you asked about the journey. 
you know, in Nigeria, when you're doing comedy, when you start comedy, as if, like when we started, it was not easy, like I said. You had to go through a whole lot of people. The person that actually made us stand, to the best of my knowledge, as a man called Alibaba, he is like the godfather that we have in Nigeria of comedy. Most of us passed through him. A man is wonderful. He did a lot. He was the one that broke the ice. He was the first person to perform, well, to the best of my knowledge, the first person to perform for the likes of the presidents then and all those things. He was the one that broke the ice. Even though there's no ice in Nigeria, all of them, they melt easily. But he broke the ice and gave way for all of us. And I think this man is practically doing the same for these wonderful comedians. I've not seen them perform, but with the speeches they've made, wow, oh my God, my brother. This, you, you have a beautiful speech. I love what you said. <laughs> I love everything you said. I heard everything you said. For sure. Really, I heard every single word. But I don't understand one. <laughs> I'm not deaf, so I can hear. Honestly, it's, it's, it's lovely. And I hope and pray that this show this night is going to be wonderful. By the time people come and they're leaving, they will be looking forward to the next for the next one and you say it's monthly yes. yeah. wow that's lovely every month to build up for the yearly show even though in nigeria now we have daily shows and weekly shows we do weekly and some people do daily <laughs> no, really. oh, yeah. they do daily because let me tell you how they do it <laughs> they go to nightclub <laughs> in the nightclub on a monday somebody has a comedy club Tuesday, he has another one in another night school. Wednesday, he has another one. Thursday, Friday. So now we practically, we don't have nine to five jobs, but it's actually nine to five because you start by 9 p.m. <laughs> I end by 5 a.m. So we're like, which is, we fly at night. We perform at night, we do our things at night, but it's fine. I know that this is going to go, you know, to another level. It's going to take comedy to another level, which is our prayer. So thank you very much. What do you suspect about this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you had it, please. Tell us every other thing about yourself. Your blood cook, your general time. <laughs> and everything. <laughs> This is like my. I think it's gonna be like my sixth. I think the sixth show, apart from Grove, Grove, uh, yeah, Grove Awards. Because I think I hosted Grove Awards like three years in a row. Then um, I came for uh, Com Factory. Com Yes. Then uh, yeah, I feel this is like my fifth show. And I can see every time, every time. My f the first time, concentrate. I was really on your own. No, no, you say, you say, oh my God, you say uh, uh, comfort. This is somebody's property. Now you're going to be comfort. <laughs> do you know what comfort uh, is? Can we do what we, we came to do? Stop now? playing keyboard. This is a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think it's fair that you also concentrate on my speech. <laughs> it's very motivational. <laughs> so this is your work. <laughs> For someone that used to carry a microphone, we're not happy. So, question, question. No. Okay, in just a few words, because we have to wrap up um, soon. <laughs> no, the cameraman can go. We have mobile phones. <laughs> okay, um, now you said you come to Rwanda a couple of times. You know, yeah. one, how do you view the country, and two, your expectations for the show tonight? You speak as if the country is uh, an like Instagram status. Okay. <laughs> How do I view it? But five people viewed it so far. Um, um, Rwanda is an amazing place, and I can say, um, for, don't don't step me like that. You said so concentrate. I'm concentrating. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, being 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 amongst the countries which are Kenya, we view Rwanda as a small small sister, but there are a lot of things that you guys are challenging us with. Like you said, apart from just um, uh, you guys being um, organized. 
the way you guys are clean, and I think it actually literally affects how Rwandan actually have clean hearts. I think it's just it's a cleaning thing all over this country. The people are nice, they are warm. Every time I come here, I have, I have, normally I have such a good time. One of those, we talk to you as if we've known each other for that five years. It is, it's just the first time. And it is an amazing trait about you people. And um, I don't want to talk and say, if I was to choose a country apart from Kenya, definitely Rwanda would be the place. Then I felt jealous that um, uh, Arsenal chose Rwanda, <laughs> choosing Kenya. <laughs> Kenya, we are just sponsoring. <laughs> <laughs> Some things are not even worth talking about. But at least at least now you're assured um, as an Arsenal fan, I am assured that our players are okay. Mm. It's okay, you wait. We're talking about football. Yes, the only the only club we are sponsoring is United. So I think I think basically um, I am um, I, I love this place, and, and I think from Arthur can bear witness. When he called me, told me, bro, I need you to come down. I was like, um, I think you're wasting time with this whole explanation. Just give me the date, and uh, in this time when we're having a lot of end of year parties back at home, top MCs and top comedians are, are so much on demand. Um, I was like, you know what? Leave the other clients. I just told my office, forget about the other clients. Book this date. I have to go to Rwanda. And I woke up at three so that I can make it to the airport on time because I have a tendency of missing flights. But this one I make sure I don't miss. It's because it's one and I love this place. It's beautiful. Thank you. Now, uh, before we wrap up, we want to get questions from the audience. Anyone who has a question? Anyone? <laughs> Jean Paul. <laughs> you guys don't answer one question, we'll ask you. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I, I think he's been honest enough. About <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, okay. Uh, before we wrap up, that was a nice on behalf of the nation, because I had to get at the plants.
I want to just say you're very fashionable and you and the partnership to support more and more and it's not only the comedy industry but uh, the creative industry as a whole. Thank you so much. Athanation there. Athanation there. <laughs> <laughs>